gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to kick that like button on the jaw. Punch this is to face it, ring that notification bell, like the match has started. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing your NXT results. The winners, the greats, and the highlights from this up. So, so without further ado. Do just sit back, relax, pop open a can of your favorite soda like Dr. Pepper. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. Whoa, that was cool. Mm. Tasty. So without further ado, let's get in to the results. The April 22nd episode of NXT marks more than a month of shows without the WWE Universe in attendance. Because of travel restrictions at the moment, WWE has been running a tournament to crown an interim cruiserweight champion until Jordan Delvin can defend his title again. This week's show featured more matches in the tourney as Jack Gallagher took on the newcomer Phantasma. Tony Nese took on Kushida, Kushida and the recently released Drake Maverick battled Jake Atlas. The women's division was also in action as Ting Tegan Knox teamed up with Shotzi Blackheart to take on Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Let's take a look at everything that happened on this week's episode of NXT. First up, we got Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart versus Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. As soon as the bell rang for the first match, Gonzalez propelled herself across the ring and took out Knox with a boot to the face in one fluid movement. Blackheart helped her partner regain the upper hand as the show went to a commercial. When we returned, Kai and Forcer had the green-haired grappler in a submission. Kai played the heel well by not tying in unless she had an advantage. Knox, <clears throat> Knox was only able to get her hands on her former best friend once or twice. Despite a late rally from Blackheart and Knox, Gonzalez scored the win for her team with a one-armed power ball. What do I grade this? I grade this a B minus. Why? Man, that's good. Why do I grade it that? Is because Kai adapted to the role of a heel well after spending her entire NXT run as a babyface. She uses dirty tactics tactics and has great facial expressions. Performing without fan fans is still harder for some talents than others. Blackheart is a lot of fun to watch, but her sh but her shtick would be better if she had a crowd around her. Gonzalez is still new, but is already establishing a reputation as one of the toughest stars in the division. This was a solid match, but it did did do much to stand out. Now, moving on. To the next, one. next up, we got Jake Atlas versus Drake Maverick. Atlas is still new to NXT, and he got a big opportunity by getting a spot in the Cruiserweight title tournament with a first round match against Drake Maverick. WWE released Drake Maverick along with dozens of other employees last week, so it surprised a lot of people when he was announced he would still be a part of this tournament. This was a hard-fought contest with a lot of back-and-forth action. Atlas looked good as the aggressor, but Maverick was a star with his subtle performance of a man desperate to do something to keep his job. A failed hurricane runner from Maverick led to Atlas hitting the beautiful DDT. From the top turnbuckle. What do I grade this? I grade this a B because WWE, WWE rarely acknowledges when somebody is released. But Drake Maverick 
was given a video package showing the video he made following the news. The former 205 Live general manager looked desperate. He was treating this bout like his job depended on it, because that is what the storyline called for. Some people might think WWE's wrote is wrong for releasing him and still asking him to work during the pandemic. Pandemic. But if this gives Maverick more exposure before, he has to look for a new job. He was probably grateful for the opportunity. Maverick is a great performer, and he made Atlas look good for somebody who has only been in the business for a few years. It's too bad this couldn't be. This could be the last time we see the former rock star Spud in WWE. Now, moving on. Next up, we got Kushida versus Tony Nese. The set get cruiserweight title tournament of match of the night featured the former cruiserweight champion Tony Nese taking on a man looking to win his first gold in the WWE. Kushida came into WWE with a lot of fanfare, but has yet to have the kind of success it takes to win champions. This tournament could be his time to shine. Him and Nice kept the match grounded for a few minutes with a series of takedowns and submissions. The premier athlete had a significant power advantage, and he used it to throw Kushida out of the ring and into the barricade. They picked up the pace after the break. Kushida unloaded on Tony Nese with a flurry of strikes before he finished off his opponent with a trademark submission. What do I grade this? I grade this A B because the premier athlete and the Japanese superstar each received this short video before the match where they talked about how much winning the title would mean to them. This was a great match that allowed both men to show off what it what makes them special. Tony Nice, even in defeat, looked better than he has in months. Even though this is a round robin tournament, this is a combination combination WWE should keep in its back pocket for the future. They had great chemistry. Moving on to the next one. Next up we got Mia Yim versus Jesse Camria. Kermia. Is Jesse Kimria is a relative newcomer to WWE, and she was given a big opportunity to face one of NXT's rising stars in Mia Yim. The Blossom Batty, or how do you do that? Say that was a very was very low vocal during the match. She taunted her opponent while almost treating her like a rookie. She didn't need to worry about. Kamiya showed her why that was a mistake with some stiff strikes. However, Mia Yim turned things around with a perfect protect your neck for the win. Charlotte Flair made her way to the ring after the match was over, and she said she wanted to face Mia Yim as her first opponent in NXT because she respects her. What do I grade this? I grade this a C plus because Kamiya, Kamiya has some work to do. But she looked good working with Mia Yim. She had a few nice spots and played the role of a heel well. Mia Yim is just waiting for the right opportunity to, break, to have a breakout moment. She's a unique character with great chemistry. This was a short match, but it was long enough for both women to get in some offense. Charlotte and Mia Yim had an interesting e interaction after the bout was over. So... Moving on to the next. Next up, we got Jack Gallagher taking on El Hijo del Fantasma. Fantasma made his NXT debut this week in another first round match in the Cruiserweight title tournament against Jack Gallagher. The gentleman fighter has undergone a lot of changes recently. He added some tattoos and changed his facial hair and is trying to be taken more seriously as a performer. His new attitude served him well as he controlled the early part of the match with some ground-based offense. His comedic tactics were gone, and he focused on inflicting as much pain as possible. The second half of 
The second half of the match was more competitive as Fatasma made a comeback and scored the win with a Samoan driver. What do I grade this? I grade this a B minus because this was a good match, but it didn't feel like the WWE had planned for Fatasma for his debut. Instead of establishing himself right away with a few decisive wins, he and Jack Gallagher were, the, were evenly matched. Gentleman's Jack, Gentleman Jack's transformation, transformation is a bit jarring, but his old gimmick had worn out. It's welcome. It's nice to see him getting an opportunity and build himself back up. Fantasma is going to be a great addition to the WWE roster, but he will need to do something to set himself apart from the other masked luchadors who work for the company already. So, moving on to the next one. And finally, the main event! Keith Lee in Velveteen Dream versus Roderick Strong and Adam Cole. As soon as the ref called for the bell, the Undisputed Era attacked Velveteen Dream and Keith Lee. While the referee was getting rid of Bobby Fish, Damian Priest appeared to hit Lee with his nightstick in the throat. Dream continued to fight while officials checked on the North American champion at ringside. When we returned, Lee had been taken to the back while Dream stayed in the fight. A few minutes later, Dexter Loomis appeared on the apron in Dream's corner. No other options. The former North American champion was forced to tag his uh, improv two partner. Loomis took out Strong while Dream hit the Purple Rainmaker for the win. What do I grade this? I grade this a B because the storyline between Lee and Priest robbed us a full us of a full match from the Limitless one, but it ended up being good for Loomis. The Odd Man with a must. Dash has come across more as a heel in his first few appearances, but this may indicate he will be a babyface or a tweener character. This is a fun main event with a lot of different things going on at once. It will be interesting to see if this leads to Loomis getting a big push, or if this is just a one-time thing. And that is all I have for you on the NXT review. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to kick that like button on jaw. Punch that subscribe button if you and ring that notification bell like the match started. And I'll see you guys next time. Two. Sawi. Okay, see you guys tomorrow.